Hello, my name is Farrick. Today, we will be talking about how to set up the software necessary to participate in, or to host, a Link to the Past multi-world randomizer. The first half of the video will focus on how to participate in a multi-world game. The second half will focus on how to host a game. Before we begin, there are two pieces of software you will need. They are linked in the video description. The first is called SNES 9X Multitroid. This is a version of SNES 9X which is capable of running Lua scripts. You can find it in its Google Drive, and you'll want version 1.6 Win32. The next thing to download is Berserker's Multi-World Utilities. This can be found on his GitHub page, underneath the Releases folder. Scroll to Assets, currently in version 1.9.1, .1, and download setup.berserkermultiworld.exe. If you'd like to play Doors instead, download the Doors version. Once you've downloaded both these files, go ahead and install Berserker's Multiworld. Accept the license agreement, and it may ask you to browse for a ROM file. Note that if you have previously installed Berserker's Multiworld and are installing as an update, you will not be asked to browse for a ROM file again. Simply browse to the location of your base Japanese 1.0 ROM, which you have legally obtained by dumping it from a physical cartridge that you own, and click Open. Click Next, and choose a location you would like to install this program to. Unless you've installed it to a custom location, I recommend creating desktop shortcuts. As the installation process proceeds, it may attempt to install Microsoft Visual Studio. I'm sorry, Visual C++. If you already have this software, it will be skipped. When the software is completed installing, you'll find two icons on your desktop. The first is a link to Berserker's Multiworld. This is launches the client. The second is a link to the folder that you just installed to your hard drive. And we'll come to that in a moment. The next thing to do is to set SNES 9X Multitroid as your default application for launching ROM files. To do this, find your base ROM file, right click on it, and click Open With. You may be suggested to choose existing SNES 9X or other emulator options. We want to avoid this as they are likely not the Multitroid version we have just downloaded. Ensure that this checkbox is checked and then click on More Apps. Scroll to the bottom for an option, look for another app on this PC. From here, we want to browse to the location that we put our SNES 9X Multitroid and click on SNES9X.exe. You'll see the emulator open. It's safe to go ahead and close it. You'll know this has worked because a SNES9X icon will appear next to your ROM files. The next thing to do is to configure your YAML file. This can be found inside of the Berserker folder that you just installed, inside of the Players folder, and is at first called easy.yaml. This YAML file is a set of configuration options to allow you to play a multi-world game how you would like to, while still allowing other people to play how they would like to. By way of example, if you would like to play an item randomizer, your friend wants to play a key sanity, and someone else wants to turn on animizer, you can all play the multi-world experience that you would like and still participate in a multi-world together. It's worth noting that this is a weighted file. You'll see here, an example has been provided for map shuffle. In this instance, on has been set to 5, and off has been set to 15. In this scenario, imagine a bucket with 20 options inside of it. 5 of these options are to turn map shuffle on, and 15 of them are to turn map shuffle off. When rolling, the generator will use your YAML file to create these buckets of options, and pick one at random. In the provided scenario, five of the options are to turn on map shuffle, and 15 are to turn it off, giving you a 75% chance to not have map shuffle. In this file, you should set your name. 
This is what will be used inside of the game as you're playing, and it will appear in the client as you send items back and forth with each other. If you intend to create multiple YAML files, I recommend setting a description here. Near the bottom of this file, you'll find that there are ROM options similar to those provided on the website. If you would like to add or play as different sprites, you may simply add them to this list and weight them appropriately. Once you have successfully configured your YAML file, I recommend renaming it. If you have more than one setup for your YAML file, you could create more than one file and name them appropriately. When you're ready to play, go ahead and send that YAML file off to whoever is generating the seed. As you wait for the seed to be generated, when it's done, you should receive a zip file which will contain patch files that look like this. They have your name in them and a .bmbp file extension. Go ahead and double click on this file and you'll see that the emulator launches automatically. But first, take a look at something. QUSB to SNES is automatically launched when you double click on a patch file. Allow access if necessary. Additionally, a ROM file is created and automatically loaded by the emulator. This ROM file is placed in the same location that your patch file is. It doesn't matter where your patch file is, that's where the ROM file will be created. Before you can begin playing, you'll want to click on the File menu and hover on Lua Scripting, then click New Lua Script Window. Here, we'll want to browse for a particular Lua file. It's going to be located inside of your Multitroid folder, inside of a folder called Lua, and you'll want multibridge.lua. You'll see here that a name has been assigned to you. The name isn't important, but it does help indicate that you've been connected. If you click on the client, you'll also see that you have been automatically connected to the game. At this point, you're ready to play, and you can begin playing this multi-world right now. If you would like to use EmoTracker for auto-tracking, it does have support for multi-world. To do so, open EmoTracker and look for a white robot face in the lower right corner. Right-click on it, hover on SNES, and click on Lua. You'll see the robot face has turned yellow. At this point, we need to open a second Lua script window from our emulator. This time, we'll need to browse for a different Lua file. This one is located inside of EmoTracker's installation directory. For me, this is in the D drive, in Program Files x86, inside EmoTracker, inside of the Connectors folder, inside the SNES 9X folder, and finally, connector.lua. Choosing that file will show connection established inside of the Lua window, and you'll also see the robot face turn green. This indicates that EmoTracker has been successfully connected and will automatically track items that you find in your game. At this point, you're all ready to go, and there's nothing else you need to do. Enjoy, and I hope it's not a pet seed. If you would like to host a game, there are a few other things that we should cover. But first, I'm going to close everything that I currently have open to prevent mass confusion. Okay, the first thing that you should do in order to prepare to host a game is to configure your host.yaml file. This can be found inside of Berserker's folder as host.yaml. This file contains options related to hosting your game. There are two important ones in here. The first is the port number. This is the port that will be used to host your game. If you choose to use a non-standard port, you will need to include that port after a colon when you provide your IP address to your players if they have to reconnect manually. Otherwise, the patch file should automatically connect them to your game, including the custom port number. Just be aware of this. The other thing to note is that it's possible for Berserker's Multiworld to attempt to automatically configure your router to port forward. If, however, this does not work 
for you, it's best to leave this option as false. So it's safe to mostly ignore this option. If you choose to ignore this option, which you probably should, you will need to go into your router settings and forward port 38281, or whatever other port you choose to use for hosting the multi-world server, to the computer you're using to host the server. Other options are available inside of host.yaml as well, including whether to create a spoiler log, whether you should zip the diffs, whether you should zip the multidata, and whether it's a race ROM. Once your host.yaml is successfully configured, you should collect YAML, file, YAML files from your players. Place them inside of the Players folder, and once that's done, go back up one level and find a file called berserkermultimystery.exe. Double click on this and you'll see that a command line window comes up automatically. This will generate the game, create a zip file, including all of the ROMs and their patch files, and put them inside of that zip file. It will also attempt to automatically host a game. Allow access if necessary. You'll see here that a multi-mystery folder has been created inside of Berserker's folder. Within this folder, you'll find the ROM files for each player, the multidata file, as well as the spoiler log if you've chosen to create one. Because it's not legal to distribute ROM files, you'll also find a zip file which contains the patch files for your players. This is the zip file that you should distribute to your players so that they can join your game. That's all you need to do. You'll see here that the server has been automatically started and you're ready to go. Good luck and enjoy.